What's going on guys, Ryan Knows Tech here with techinform.us and I want to take a look at an application that I think somebody actually tweeted me or sent me a PM about or left me a comment. Somehow I heard about the app. It's in the Mac App Store. I think it's free. It's called Mac Tracker. Kind of an interesting application to go back. I'll go ahead and open it up. We'll take a look at it here. I am 99% certain it was free. I don't remember shelling out any money for this, but it has, I think, every application or every piece of hardware as well as application Apple has made in here. It has got everything and most of the specs about these devices. I do hope that the zoom feature I'm using in Lion by holding control and zooming in on the trackpad does work with the screen recorder. I'm pretty sure it does just so we can get a better look at this even though it's not as clear as it could be. So we see all of the things that Apple has made here. Let's say we want to look at this Mac. Here it is, MacBook Pro 15 inch from early 2011. We'll click on that, and somewhere else should open, all the way over here for some reason, uh, the entire specs of this computer. It's the MacBook Pro 8.2. There's the model number, uh, order numbers, initial prices for each model, uh, the weight, all the specs that you could possibly want about what came with it here. Uh, pricing information is there. Taking a look at software, it's going to tell you uh, what original and later OS it came with, even though mine came with 10.7. Uh, but obviously mine was not purchased uh, right when this model came out. There's information about memory and graphics. It tells you that it'll actually support 16 gigs of RAM or 8 gigs of RAM that you can get with Apple. Uh, connections and expansion. It's got all this information right here. And that's just my computer. So let's say we wanted to come into Notebooks. Expand that. Here's the iBook. There's all the different iBooks. It tells you May of 2002 to November of 2002. Taking a look at the iBook 16 VRAM here. It was $1,200 for the 600 megahertz or $1,500 for the 700 megahertz version. Support status is obsolete, unfortunately. I know that uh, I'm sure that you want this machine. Storage, you either had 20, 30, or 40 gigs hard drive. Wow. Yeah, there's all the information on that. Let's see uh, memory here. Maximum RAM, 640 meg. Logic board RAM was 128 meg. Wow, this is when Steve was back too in 2002. Uh, the iBook G4 from mid-2005, much better. Logic Board RAM, a half a gig. General, I'll get some pricing on here. $9.99 for, uh, see what clock speed that was. Where does it say? 1.33 gigahertz. Yeah, we've come a long way. And then up there it tells you the numbers and any information you'd ever want to know is here. There's the MacBook Pro. It started off in January of 06 with, I believe, the Core Duo. Take a look under General here, and we'll see what processor that came with. Five and a half pounds. Yeah, Intel Core Duo T2500. I actually have one of those processors in the ThinkPad, the 2 gigahertz model. Not bad. They added 2.16 for $2,500. Very expensive for uh, not a whole lot back then. But they don't even—they don't only have notebooks. Taking a look under Desktops, we've got the eMac from 2002 to 2005. There's all the information on the eMac. That thing, all the way, look at this, 1993, uh, 16 pounds, oh, the good old days. Power Mac, Mac Pro, don't have a whole lot of those. Mac Mini and the most popular iMac here, started off in 98. Oh uh, yeah, Bondi Blue, got all the information on that. It's also got a timeline here, you can look at it by the year. If we come up to 2011, we can see everything they've done here in 2011. There's 2004, really nice application for being free. It's from the Mac App Store, so anybody with a Mac on Snow Leopard or Lion can get this. On their devices, there's the iPhone. There's all four iPhones. Notice there's five because there's a CDMA version of the iPhone 4. iPad, we've got Wi-Fi, 3G GSM, and 3G CDMA. There's their displays. Check this out. I found one of these displays a couple years ago that was really expensive. Yeah, $3,300 for a 30-inch DVI cinema display in 2004. A lot of money. Printers that they had way back in the day. The Newton, what some people called the first iPad. There's uh, mice and keyboards, Wi-Fi cards. Anything that Apple has had is here. All the specs, really easy to get to. Servers, I'm not going to go through everything here, obviously. Here's some software, Mac OS. We can come back to Mac OS 9.1 from January 2001. It was $99. Distribution was CD-ROM. Got some history notes. It looks like it was called that Fortissimo. 
I guess. But uh, pretty cool app to come in here. Uh, you can search by your models. You can enroll your own stuff. Leaving warranty, what's in warranty. This is all your stuff down here. And then, of course, everything else here. Looking under all models, there's just tons of stuff that somebody took the time to enroll in here. Cool application to be able to look through and see how things have changed. And it's funny to look back only five years ago and see how slow things were and how expensive they were. Apple's always been a premium brand, but uh, they've definitely come down in price. Uh, you'd expect things to go up, but I guess inflation has worked backwards with Apple. So that's my review of Mac Tracker. Uh, I know somebody will probably ask, looking up here under preferences, there's not a whole lot here. We can tell it to show the timeline or not. Under appearance, we just have some text size labels. My models, enroll your own stuff. Turn on iCal support. Nothing too profound there. Thanks for watching the video. I'll leave a little bonus question. What's the car on my desktop right now? Not a real hard question. Be sure to check out our site, techinform.us, and my Twitter, twitter.com slash Schultz. Subscribe if you like this stuff, and I'll talk to you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye-bye.